Today we will be taking a look into the Jambonet Ramsey case, focusing on the inconsistencies in the Ramsey family. In an early interview, John claims that when they returned home from the White's Christmas party, John Bennett was asleep in the car, so he picked her up, carried her inside, and put her to bed. In another later interview, the story changed. He later claimed that she was awake, and walked inside herself, and went to bed. Although this may seem like such a small detail, it appears much larger when countless other inconsistencies are put together. Patsy claims Burke was in bed when she called 911, but when she thought she hung up, many people believe they can hear a child's voice asking, what did you find, or a man's voice asking, what did you do? Patsy, John, and Burke have denied these claims. At this point, Detective Linda Arn had arrived at the scene of the Rancy house, along with family friends that Patsy had called and had come over. This is how Linda describes John's demeanor when arriving at the home. 8.10 a.m., Arndt arrived at the Ramsey home and meets John Ramsey for the first time. How did he strike you? Cordial. Cordial? Mm-hmm. Upset? Cordial. Distraught? Cordial. <laughs> Patsy and John Rancy claim they were waiting for the call to come at some point between 8.10, as the ransom note said, but instead, the time came and went without the Rancys realizing until after. Detective Linda recalls the Rancys having no sense of urgency or fear when the call never came. This has made many speculate the Rancys acted this way because they knew no call was coming, they already knew what had happened to their daughter. A short time after, around noon, Detective Linder recalls John disappearing for about 90 minutes. John claims he was in his study. This has caused speculation, as people can't understand why John would leave for 90 minutes to be in his office, while his daughter is missing and Patsy, police, family friends and pastor are all in the house. It's never been confirmed if he was actually in his study during this time. John was told by one of the detectives to search the house from top to bottom. Instead, John decided to search the house from the bottom to the top with his friend, Fleet White. John went straight to the basement door that authorities tried to open earlier that day, but it wouldn't open for them. John opened the door and yelled, I found her. Although the police said they were unable to open the basement door, Fleet White stated in a police interview that he opened the door to the basement earlier that day but could not find the light switch. If Fleet White was unable to see John Bennett's body at the bottom of the stairs, then how did John Rancy see it? 
John has claimed he turned on the light and then found her, but in Fleet White's interview, he stated John yelled I found her, and then turned on the light after. John Bennett was covered in this white sheet. John took the tape off John Bennett's mouth and attempted to untie her hands. When he couldn't, he picked her up and brought her upstairs and placed her on the living room floor. The Rancys had invited family and friends over, people walking in and out of the house all morning, so at this point, the crime scene was contaminated. John Rancy asks Detective Lisa if John Bennett is dead. Lisa said yes, and John proceeded to cover John Bennett with a blanket, contaminating the crime scene even more. Detective Lisa recalls being fearful of her life because she was left alone with the Rancys, and she suspected they were the murderers. I ordered him to put John Bonnet down. I knelt next to her and I leaned down to her face. And John leaned down opposite me. And um, his face was just inches from mine. And we had a nonverbal exchange that I will never forget. And he asked if she was dead. And I said, yes, she's dead. And I told him to go back to the room and to dial 911. And as we looked at each other, I remember, and I wore a shoulder holster, tucking my gun right next to me and consciously counting, I've got 18 bullets. Why did you do that? Because I didn't know if we'd all be alive when people showed up. I said that everything made sense in that instance. And uh, I knew what happened. Do you think your fear was well-founded? You bet I do. There's no doubt in my mind. To this day? Never wavered. You were afraid because you thought the killer was still in the house. I knew it. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the grot that was used on John Bennett. It was made from one of Patsy Rancy's paint brushes and was put around John Bennett's neck. This is what ultimately killed her. A suitcase was propped up next to one of the basement windows with a scuff mark on the wall as if someone used it to get out of the basement. One part of the window was open, and one part was broken. The broken part John claims was from him, and he forgot to fix it. The partial imprint of the sole of a high-tech brand shoe was found in the wine cellar, but the partial imprint was too small to determine what the shoe size was. A bowl of pineapple and milk, and a cup of iced tea were found on the kitchen counter. Patsy, John, and Burke have all claimed they did not have pineapple that night, and it wasn't them that had it out. Patsy and Burke's fingerprints were found on the cup, spoon, and bowl. This flashlight, left on the kitchen counter, is what's believed was used to hit John Bennett and fracture her skull. This three-page ransom note, written on one of Patsy Rance's notepads, and a pen in the house, was left on one of the bottom stairs of their spiral staircase from John and Patsy's room. A practice note was also left behind. The notepad and pen were both neatly put back where they were found, in their usual spots. This is the spiral staircase the note was found on. The small table to the right is where the notepad and cup of pens is kept. This metal bat was found outside the house. In an interview, Patsy claims she doesn't remember if the bat is Burke's or not, and later stated that it did not belong to them. Fibers from the rug in the basement where John Bennett's body was found, were found on the metal bat. As of now, the Rancys have been cleared, and the DNA found on John Bennett has not been matched to anyone. The case is still open, and as far as we know, is being actively worked on. If you would like more videos on specifically Burke Rancy, John Rancy or Patsy Rancy, or a more in-depth video on this case, please let me know in the comments. I plan to do a separate in-depth video on the note itself, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more weekly crime videos.